Just showing you just some of the growth that we've got going on down here. It's cool, isn't it? A rampant growth has occurred. They're about five feet tall now, these. And also, so what happens is you get the suckers that are coming on. And that occurs in the... Um, in the sort of crotch, if you want, of the uh, of the plant as it grows up. So you've got your central stem. What I've not done here is I've missed one that was growing in the crotch of the central stem. So that's the central stem that's coming up there, the, the, and then there it's split. And that back one that you can see, this I'm just trying to show you now, this back one is actually a sucker coming off from the central stem that's the central stem and that's the sucker but because it's got tomatoes on it, it's got flowers on it I'm loath to cut it out at this stage but all the little ones that you can spot this one's a, um, a bushy type tomato this one so I'm going to leave that one the bushy ones you leave, the vining ones You've got to take out the little uh, the little suckers, otherwise they'll become essentially they become fresh new plants if you plant them on. Let them grow a bit. But you don't want these to be bushy. You want the um, plant to take up its nutrients through the central stem, go out and feed the tomatoes as they come on. It means you don't get quite as many tomatoes, but it means you get successful tomatoes if you do it that way. By all accounts, for everybody that I've talked to. And uh, from the experience we had last year, that's the way forward with it. So if you leave me to this, now I'll take all of these out and I'll continue to um, tie these up so that they climb up the canes. I'm going to head them off, I think, at some stage, which means you um, take the central, the central stem and, um, and nip it off so that it doesn't continue on to grow taller. When you get it to the height that you want, you can um, you can deadhead it, and in that way, you can control it so it doesn't get massively big. Uh, this greenhouse stands at about seven feet tall, but obviously because of the pitch of the roof, we're limited to the height that we can get on these. I don't want them massively high and big. I'll let them just grow on and, uh, and fruit up once they get to this height to the top of the canes, cut them out, let them actually bush out a little bit, get the fruit on and continue on with the process. We'll get plenty of fruit off these, don't worry about that, get plenty of toms out of it. Already on this sun goal here at the bottom, we've got a few vines coming through. Yeah, so I'll carry on with that. Like I say, you turn your back on these for two minutes and they're away. That's a sucker that was missed. It's got it's getting flowers on it though. But we'll take these out. The ones we can spot. So we don't get too much bushy action. Okay, catch you later. So you've just seen these tomatoes, but this is the top uh, right hand corner of our plots. Um, as well as the different varieties of tomatoes in here we've got that cucumber that's growing down there which I'm going to stave up tomorrow and you can see the little cukes are coming on it there we've also got peppers now we've got the um, capsicum standard red yellow green capsicum that comes on that one varying stages of ripeness we've got flowers on there from the Corno de Toro Rosso Corno de Toro Rosso. We've also got magnolia, not magnolia, yeah, magnolia, isn't it? Uh, in there. Marigolds, not magnolia, you silly fool. Uh, and that's to deter the fly, the green fly, the black fly, the white fly. They're not too keen on that. Not too keen on marigolds. Laxton's Superb, these apples are called, that we've got growing on on this tree. It's a transplanted tree that we transplanted from the centre of the plot because we had to we were told to take it out from the centre of the plots and move it across so there's a definition between the sides 
which is fair play, I suppose, isn't it? I won't show you too much around here because it's a right midden. But uh, there's the apples, the Laxton's superb there. The pears are coming through. These are conference pears. Some will live, some will die, dependent. They had a load off them last year, but this year I don't think we'll have as many. Although there's a lot, there's lots of them on, but I don't think you'll get them. If we get a third of them to full fruit, then we're laughing because we'll have about 70 or 80 pears off that. There's about 170, 180 pears on that tree. The cherry tree that we transplanted from the middle of the plot, <laughs> I doubt we'll get anything at all off this year. Because uh, it's been messed about far too much over the last 12 months, but you never know. In this bed, I put the French climbing beans. So we've got the uh, the violet, what would they call now? Cossy violet on this side. And then on the other side, um, Blue Lake, they were called, these ones. These are the green French climbing beans on that side. So we'll see what the results are going to be from that one. There's nothing really coming through at the moment. I mean, there's a couple of little bits and bobs that you can see, but I'll give them about a week more, and then you'll be able to see what the seedlings are like as they're coming through from this top bean, be uh, bean bed, which is an eight foot by um, my two foot bean bed. These peas in this small bed, um, which is a four foot by one foot bed, um, are on both sides. So there's a Clevedon Wonder peas on either side of this central bit that you can see there they'll climb to about three feet in height so we're guessing they're going to be around about where the bottles are uh, when they're at the full growth which should be in about five or six weeks they were planted as seeds directly into the soil um, three weeks ago so that's three weeks growth that which isn't too bad but we've had the exact right conditions for the peas so that's good on our big old inherited i.e we got it this year because we got the plot this year apple tree it's a cooking apple tree this one and we've got loads and loads on now last year they all dropped really before they got to full fruition um they dropped the fruit so we're hoping that's not going to happen this year you usually have a good year and a bad year for things like that for your fruit trees so this year should be uh, hopefully fingers crossed better these buckets were done by the kids uh, about six weeks ago and um, they've got the new potatoes in the I think they've got a bit of a mixture can't tell you exactly what varieties about two or three different varieties anyway they've been thrown into the and um, they're only half filled them buckets so I'm not expecting to get too much from them uh, but there they are there's about 20 buckets there with potatoes in and they're up at the top left hand corner of the two plots that's the sort of mid plot on the new plot mid plot black shed which is six foot by four foot that's going to be moved it's going to be moved to there next week which will hope hopefully free up lots of space to put another greenhouse there in fact that particular frame is going to be going here which is another six foot by eight foot greenhouse those flags are going to be coming up and moved the greenhouse is going to go there i know the apple trees there but don't worry about that it doesn't matter it's going to be moved slightly away from the other greenhouse onto the six foot by eight foot the six foot going up uh, sort of the eight foot going up this way the six foot that way and then all around here i'm going to put other further beds in once that's in position but that's going to be moved as i say over there at the back of the plot Lovely chrysanthemums around the base of the cooking apple tree. They're lovely. This is the first of the sizeable netted greenhouses that we've got. I say greenhouses, netted hoop tents that we've got. It's quite a size, it's not a bad size. And uh, it's got broccoli growing in here. Lots of broccoli, because we like broccoli. And there's lots of it in here, interplanted with the red loose leaf lettuce and the green loose leaf lettuce. That's difficult to say when you've got a false tooth and a plate in, but I've said it and I did well. I think you'll uh, I think you'll agree there, boys and girls. So in there we've got all together, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Calabrese, broccoli in there and lettuce. That lettuce is doing fine and dandy. We're gonna get some leaves off that tonight for salad. So that's the first of the big ones.
We put the nets over to stop and deter the fly getting on it and also well, some of the fly getting on it but especially the cabbage white butterfly because it lays its larvae which turn into caterpillars. It lays its eggs, larvae, caterpillars come out and devour the entire bloody crop. And here's its little brother next door to it. This is on the original plot 36 side and again interplanted lettuce which is looking nice and healthy not too much damage i mean even if the slugs did ever go at this they'd, uh, you'd need an army of slugs to sort of get the way through all of this stuff and in here we've got um, a mixture really of broccoli in the middle and then we've got um, cauliflowers at the sides so we've got about 12 cauliflowers in there and we've got six broccoli down the center of that Broccoli grows quite tall. This is about three and a half feet high this So it's still going to be scraping the uh, the ceiling when it's uh, When it's at its full tilt But um, yeah, it's doing all right Love that kind of stuff us. We love the um, the broccoli and the cauliflower especially I like cauliflower cauliflower cheese But I also have a real good taste for broccoli as well and calabrese For those of you that don't know broccoli Isn't what you think broccoli is Broccoli, what you think broccoli is, is calabrese, which are the big fat-headed broccoli-looking um, head stems. But real broccoli is the thin purple sprouting on thin um, shoots of broccoli, really. Anyway, that's an aside. I said it'd be a quick tour, this thing. Uh, Sapo made it. No, I've no I'm telling, I'm telling lies, I think, there. I think it's Desiree in here. So the Desiree or Sapo made I'll find out, I'll look back in the videos and find out for sure. I shouldn't know, I've got a plot plan somewhere, but I'm crap. More spuds in there. I'll tell you what, if we don't get a good uh, potato harvest this year, I'm going to set fire to my own willy and uh, put it out with a, with a lump hammer because I'll have done something severely insane to not get potatoes this year. Uh, 30 litre buckets there, again they've got, they have got Desiree in, I'm certain of that. We put two chitted Desiree potatoes into these 30 litre buckets the sort of baby Tony O'Neill specials he uses the 50 litre ones in but uh, we only had the 30 so yeah one two three of those again potatoes in there these are a pound a piece from uh, B&M bargains these are the storage containers two potatoes in there's the first early type in there just threw them in because we had some left, really, and we've got, what, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, because there's 7. So there's 14 seed potatoes gone in there. We're hoping to get, if we say 10 from each seed potato, that's 140 potatoes just there. But they'll only be small. They'll only be sort of like little chicken egg size, if we're lucky. This is the big Bradley's kids, the kids' cage where we lock the kids when they're being naughty. We shut them in here, put that clasp down, and they can't get out of the, of the. And we just leave them in there for only for about five or six days, you know, until they're starved a little bit and they've learned the lesson. And so in here we've got. In fact, let me open it up because you'll get a better look at it, won't you? If you open it up. Oh, I think I tightened that up a little too much, you know. Last time I came down, I did. Just to keep the kids out of it. Brad's cage. That's our little list boy. That's the uh, mini digger. So over there we've got the rainbow chard. Chard either side really. We've got the rainbow chard on that side. And we've got the bright yellow chard on that side. They were put in about four weeks ago. Also we've got these lovely, a lovely crop obviously of these uh, bindweed. God I hate bindweed. I despise bindweed. Each one, see each one of these little roots that's coming off from this? If that gets left in the ground, it becomes another bindweed. It's, it's, oh, God, it's, um, I nearly swore then. Uh, down that side, we've got broccoli again down there. We've got six broccoli. We've got three uh, cauliflower at the back. Behind those, as you can just see through the gaps in the, in the cauliflower there, we've got um, cluster planted beetroot, so we can get baby beetroots coming off that. There's about six or seven on each station of them, and there's about seven stations at the back there. So we'll get about 40, 50 of them. We've got celeriac there. 
We've got celery there that needs desperately to go into the ground, but a lazy man's not put it in yet. We've got five or six uh, more lettuce, red lettuce this time, loose leaf down either side there. And we've got three red cabbages in there as well. Okay, once that lettuce comes out, I'll be put, putting more beetroot in there too, because I like beetroot. And uh, we're probably going to be putting some more celery in. We've also got a couple of these here, if you look at that there, that's a little raspberry volunteer. Because about two years ago, there were a raspberry... Um, growing here but we thought we'd got rid of it all and we haven't we actually put cardboard down underneath here to stop things coming through but it's worked a little bit but not 100 percent anyway that's brad's cage i think it's cool what do you think mr ladybird get on with it blueberry bushes in the edicaceous chamber we've got seven blueberry bushes in there some very little ones like that, two little ones like that, that were put in this year. And the others that were little like that last year and are now about four times the size. Now if we get the uh, blueberries that we're hoping for off these, you can see there's plenty on. If we get what we're hoping for, the birds don't nick them all first, then we're laughing here because we'll have about two or three pound of blueberries, I think. And the more you pick of them, the more they keep coming. You can get two or three flushes off these. So in the courgette bed, we've only got three courgette plants, but there's two courgettes on that one. They only put in about uh, 10 days ago, these. Obviously, they were already plants, weren't they? But uh, they only got put outside about 10 days ago. And we're getting courgettes on them, and we've got a yellow one. So there's two green and a yellow. I just found these at the back of a cupboard at our house that hadn't been touched. So I thought I'd give them a whirl. I just stuck them in the ground, but I need to bury them a bit deeper, don't I? They're pushing themselves out. They're pushing themselves out, the little monkeys. We'll see how they get on. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd throw them in there. We've got Jack Billickle and we've got um, spaghetti squash. Some seeds that we got from Natasha Goswami. On it, Josh. Um, against that trellis that I put in last week. So they're going to grow up there. We're hopefully going to get the squashes and little baby pumpkins off that. We've got the greyhound cabbage in here. We had a couple of fatalities in here. As you can see, there's a couple missing. They didn't quite make the, make the muster, make the cut. But uh, greyhound cabbage is the one that I particularly like. I'm not a massive cabbage fan, but I do like greyhound. This is the trellis that we did um, in the week, last week. <coughs> and as you can see there, we've got the... Um, I put sweet pea, which is an in inedible pea, but produces lovely flowers, beautiful blossoms and blooms. And we've got that on both sides of that. There's me more a kniff. It's a good kniff, that. You put my kniff away. I'll leave your kniff hanging about, could you? More a companion, I think it's called, that kniff. Very sharp, I keep it very sharp for the interloper. Up they'll come, they'll hopefully climb up that terrace and get to about six feet high, five or six feet high up here. And completely fill that with lovely, lovely flowers. The bees love it to bits. Yeah? They're quite fond of marigold as well, as you can see. There, there's some more peas that I want to be putting in. Um, I'm thinking and contemplating about putting it into this new bed that I've put in here at the side of the two little rose beds that I did last week. I'm going to be putting, I think, peas in the, this year. Those peas, fix a bit of nitrogen into the soil, and then next year I'd have that as an out-and-out -out flower bed for her. Another bed's going to go there as well. I'm going to put some flowers in there for Helen as well. Inside the glass greenhouse on the new side, again, we've got some more um, that I need to get out, actually, some more cauliflower. I'm just going to have to find somewhere to put them. I was going to do it tomorrow and get some beds in here and uh, put the hoop tents on them and get the cauliflower in there because we've got a couple of giant cabbage at the back there that I've never had a chance to get out either. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to cry. The um, 
the grapes have been affected by sun damage too much direct hot sun damage on them through the glass and as you can see there it's popped a few of them off quite a few of them actually about um, two thirds of them that's what I think it is anyway on my grapes it can't all be wonderful and fantastic can it I'm not that lucky am I but what I think I have done is I took too much foliage off too quickly that's my feeling and I've exposed the uh, the little baby grapes to too much direct hot sunlight through that glass and the last couple of weeks couple of weeks of really hot weather I think has scorched them that's what it looks like to me and so you've only got the most resilient of graplings left on it's a shame that isn't it we had loads on anyway never mind I'll not have to thin them out will I so there's another uh, long red sweet pepper plant there another corno de toro de toro rosso a baby cuke giving us little baby cukes mother earth's already had two of these she said they were fine and dandy so we're hoping that they'll come on carry on climb up here up to the top of this trellis and fill this trellis with lots and lots of cucumbers that's what we're hoping for i'm going to be sorting this out so that i can get the uh, the other cukes and peppers and tomatoes set up in here in these trays but that's uh, yeah that's 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 by the by our potato experiment's still going on another three weeks to go on it what we did was um ten weeks ago we no, it was the 9th of March we started this experiment and the experiment is to see what kind of amendments that you put into your standard compost growing medium have best effect on uh, new potatoes or any kind of potato really as regards to actual tubers if there is a difference between using the two buckets of grow more two buckets of chicken manure two buckets of blood fish and bone that we've got in then we want to see that you know see if there is a that's why i've done this two for each we've actually got um the ulster prints in these first six buckets two in that one with the grow more two in that one with the chicken manure two in that one with the blood fish and bone and then we've got the red duke of york same again two 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 chicken um grow more chicken manure blood fish and bone <laughs> just for an experiment to see what happens see what's best see if there is a difference between them here's the giant pumpkin there's our giant pumpkin he's coming along nice and strong i'm going to have to get these um marigolds in the ground and these peas i want to do that tomorrow that again is another i think it's another giant pumpkin but it's not as giant as its mate is it i don't know what's up with him he's sulking isn't he uh 28 um sweet corn in if anybody knows why this is happening by the way because I've never seen, and we've never grown sweet corn before to be fair, but I've never seen this. Do you know what I mean? There's four stems there coming off from the one central stem. And he's not the only one either. There's one there. There's one there. They're all over the bloody shop. Stems, new stems coming. Let me know if that's okay to leave them on, or is it best to get shut of them? Because I don't know. I'm going to have to tie that on as well. That's Mother Earth's um, giant sunflower that, that she planted. Well, she started and I've planted it in there. These are the successionally grown peas and these are the onward peas. Started at that side. Just all thrown in, handfuls of them to be honest. Over planted by the look of them to be fair. Uh, and they're working their way down successionally. Week one, week two, week three, week four. Uh, week four's been in now for four weeks. And he's been in for eight weeks and they're all flowered up. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be getting the peas off them. We've also got a good crop, as you can see, the bindweed, which is a pain in the uh, in the aris, low, you know, in, in the sort of lower back area. This It's a very, a very annoying, annoying annoying thing I hate it I hate it with a passion um, I don't think we've got anything growing uh, fruit wise on this and I'm not 100% sure exactly what this is because again we've inherited this plot 
But uh, yeah, it's a bushy bugger, isn't it? This raspberry bed, I don't think we're going to keep it as a raspberry bed, that, you know. I've got a sneaking suspicion there's going to be uh, machinations afoot with that bed. Because it's looking crap. This bed, however, we will be keeping as a berry bed because it's looking all right. It's not looking too bad at all. Once it gets established next year, I think it'll be okay, that one. That one, I got, God knows what's happening with that one, but I don't like the look of it, and neither does Helen. It looks crap. More potatoes over there at the front. There's the um, Ulster Prince, and at the back, there's the Red Duke of York. So again, we've got like six buckets, six buckets there. That's just been done in the grow more. No, in the uh, blood fish and bone, though, that... Uh, and the same with those there, those potatoes, and again, those 30 litre buckets that are there. Uh, strawberry beds, got strawberries. Got strawberries coming on. Oh, one there that's ripening up. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, in about two or three weeks' time, we'll have a, a lovely flush of strawberries. If the uh, slugs don't get them all, or the birds. Which there's always a bloody chance of, isn't there? Look at this, this is, this is, look at this prime example, Exhibit A. Look at this. Look at that. Slug that. Son of a biatcher. Uh, goose gogs. See, we've got any goose gogs on? I've not looked for a Ah, yes, we've got goose, glo goose gogs, goose gogs, goose gogs galore. I'm getting prickled to death here by these goose gogs. Gooseberries or gooseberries. Nice crop of nettle there as well. Let's see if we've got any uh, plums on. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's one, defo. A couple of little ones coming through there, bursting through. Don't think we're going to get many off this because last year, again, it, got, it had loads on last year. You get a good year and a bad year, generally, with these. And this is the damson. <laughs> damson in distress. Oh, the damson. No, the damson didn't do well last year. This is proving my point here, because the damson didn't do well last year. But this year, it's looking like it's thriving. It's pumping out lots. Whether they're going to be mis misshapen or whatever, I don't know. But, yeah, we'll see on that. Eh? Let's get back over to... Oh, here we go. Some rhubarb there, not doing too fantastically well. Some more marigolds that want to go out because I'm a lazy get. More potatoes. These were the first ones that we put in, and these are the Winston potatoes. We put these in at the back end of February this year. Buried about 10 inches down. They're going to be ready them in a couple of weeks' time for coming out. Two or three weeks. Same with these ones. These are a mixture of Desiree and Manish Piper in here. Onions that we put in, in um, I think it was the first week of November last year. They're looking very big, but they're not looking too... Uh, I don't know whether this is right, this, you know, because look, very fat necks on them, aren't they? Fat neck, Sandy Toxfig. Little squat fat necks on, on them. Beetroot. Uh, this is the um, the fancy Dan stuff that we got from South America, which is called amaranth. Got to get this. Got to get this stuff out of the way. That's all from the uh, solar panel gear that we had. I've lined that bed up there with some of the cardboard. I want to get another bed done and get rid of some more of it. Don't like wasting stuff, me. This is going to be all right for uh, for some sort of insulation, isn't it? Looking at that, for winter time, so we'll crack on with that I think, so we'll get that sorted out tomorrow. Um, again more brassicas in here, yeah, we've got round head cabbage and we've also got cauliflower in there, this is ridiculous, uh, the amount of growth we've got, that, uh, in fact if you can give us some tips, can you uh, blanch and freeze pak choy, I know you can do it with spinach, but when you're doing it at home, how do you do it? If you can point me in the right direction to a video on it or something like that, or just let me know downstairs in the comments the, what to do, then I'll be much, uh, it'll be much appreciated. Thanks a lot. 
because we've got loads of it and it's got to come out this week because I'm sure I've, I, in fact I know I know it is that one is that's starting to bolt there and I want to uh, I want to save as much of this as we possibly can so we can eat it I mean blanching and freezing you're gonna you're gonna lose the crispness but you can still I'm guessing make soups out of it and all thought and all sorts of things like that I'm rambling answer more onions in here more garlic in there I'm leaving this even though it's got the rust on it I'm gonna leave it and let it do its very best and then just not plant any uh, alliums for three years oh god I've got indigestion now I had a burger at that uh, went to a do before and a burger at Hay Hall almost forgot this bed the central bed uh, it's got Swede in it uh, five or six Swede down each side and then the red cabbage in the middle that Swede's got to come out pretty soon it's the size of your bloody fist as it stands it's got to come out you can eat the leaves off that as well so uh, Again, we're going to be probably trying the old blanch and freeze with the leaves as well. I don't like wasting nothing if I can get away with it. The broad beans as well. Friend of the bee, the broad bean. The bees like them. Also friend of the uh, black fly, but uh, we don't like the black fly. I've, um, in fact, I've got that stuff there that I made up. Which is a, a killer and deterrent for the black fly. It's not we. It's uh, it's my garlic and cayenne pepper with uh, organic soap and um, and cooking oil mixture. That I'll show you how to make that one of these times. Perhaps I'll do it next week. I can't remember if I actually shown you that before. You steep it overnight. It's just essentially it's about four cloves of garlic, a couple of tablespoons of cayenne pepper into um, into a big jug obviously a, a jug that's that's like that i mean it's about, I think it's about a two liter or something like that jug of water crushed garlic cayenne pepper goes in in powder form that's what i used anyway and then um, a tablespoon of uh, organic liquid soap goes into the and then a tablespoon of the oil the cooking oil goes in give it a good stirring up make sure it's all nice nicely mixed strain it so you're not getting all the bits in it and then i put it into there and i'm going to be putting it putting it into a kill sprayer one of these kill sprayers spraying all the leaves with that at the top especially around the tips the growing tips so yeah hope you enjoyed that i hope it wasn't too rushed i know i said it would be a quick one that but i bet it's half an hour um but there's such a lot of stuff we've got growing on at the moment that uh, you can't really go any faster. I was rambling and stuttering over my words there. So, uh, yeah, it's all coming on nicely. We're looking forward to some great crops, some good harvests this year. And uh, we wish you the same with your growing endeavours. I'm going to have a sit down now. <laughs>